Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Hôm nay chúng ta sẽ tìm hiểu về vấn đề ctDNA. Thì ctDNA có nghĩa là gì? À, nó là viết tắt của circulating tumor DNA, tức là cái DNA của khối u nó lưu hành trong tuần hoàn và bằng phương pháp có tên là sinh thiết lỏng, tức là liquid biopsy ấy, thì chúng ta có thể tìm thấy chúng trong tuần hoàn máu. Thì đây là một xét nghiệm có thể được dùng để chẩn đoán, đánh giá điều trị và tiên lượng điều trị. Thì hôm nay chúng ta sẽ tìm hiểu về vai trò của ctDNA trong ung thư đại trực tràng giai đoạn sớm qua phần trình bày của bác sĩ Christopher Liu là bác sĩ ung thư về tiêu hóa tại Đại học Colorado. Chúng ta cùng bắt đầu nhé. Hello, my name is Chris Liu. I'm a GI medical oncologist from the University of Colorado. And thanks for taking the time to learn about ctDNA and early stage colorectal cancer. Over the next 10 minutes, this is what we want to go over. We want to describe cell-free DNA and this concept of circulating tumor DNA. We also want to discuss the potential applications of circulating tumor DNA or ctDNA in colorectal cancer. And we're going to discuss the currently available data looking at ctDNA in colorectal cancer. And of course, we'll follow up uh, or wrap up with some future directions and some uh, current ongoing clinical trials. So first, what is cell-free DNA or CFDNA and what is ctDNA? So we know that there are a lot of cells in our bodies that turn over uh, and tumors in our patients with cancer can do this as well. And they can release certain things into the bloodstream, which we can then measure. Some of them are circulating tumor cells. Tumors also release, uh, release exosomes. But when tumor cells undergo apoptosis, they do uh, release cell-free DNA into the bloodstream. And we know that a lot of our cell-free DNA in our bodies actually comes from normal cells and tissue. And so not all uh, cell-free DNA is tumor DNA. In fact, just a fraction of the circulating or cell-free DNA that's in our bodies Uh, on our patients' bodies that have cancer are actually circulating tumor DNA. But the technology allows us now to be able to detect circulating tumor DNA, which is just, again, a fraction of our overall cell-free DNA. Certainly circulating tumor DNA uh, or any kind of circulating DNA has its advantages. It's a stable analyte. You can actually do mutational analyses on the ctDNA. There are certainly established biomarkers that we can measure, uh, particularly in several cancers that have biomarker-directed therapy. Right. So we know that circulating DNA has certain advantages. We know that it's a stable analyte and that you can actually do mutational analyses on circulating tumor DNA. There are established biomarkers that we can test for in tumors that have genomically or biomarker-driven therapies. And we know that circulating tumor DNA has a short half-life, which means that what you might be detecting in the body is real-time interrogation of what's going on inside our patients. And of course, there's the potential for non-targeted whole exome or whole genome sequencing. Circulating tumor DNA also has this disadvantage. Not all tumors appear to shed detectable ctDNA. And in particular, we worry about peritoneal metastases or even small lung metastases. Certainly, the methodologies for analysis can be very complex and algorithmic, and, it, and there can be really a low amount or percentage of starting material. And even the results that you get can be impacted by age. And so there's this thing called clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, or CHIP, which may actually uh, sometimes confound some of the results that you see uh, in, in ctDNA testing. So your first take-home point, only a fraction of cell-free DNA is circling tumor DNA, and ctDNA may provide a real-time look at what is happening inside the body. So what are the potential applications of ctDNA? And today we're going to really focus on minimal residual disease or what we kind of look at for, uh, with ctDNA in early-stage colorectal cancer. So When we talk about minimal residual disease, it's this concept that's actually really well established in heme malignancies, but we don't talk about it as much with solid tumors. So when we talk about minimal residual disease or MRD, these applications are enabled by really high positive predictive value. 
And this is no longer, we should no longer think about things in terms of risk. When we talk about, say, stage two colon cancer, we talk about high risk features like T4 or poor differentiation or lymphovascular invasion. Those are all high risk clinical features. But ctDNA is actually not necessarily a high risk clinical feature as much as it is a molecular persistence of the disease. So you can really think about patients that have positive ctDNA in the quote unquote curative setting to actually not have cure disease, but actually have minimally residual disease, you know, essentially kind of minimal stage four disease. So this has been looked at in, in several studies. This was kind of the seminal study done by Jeannie T's group and was presented at ASCO in 2016. Now, that was to look at this, the use of ctDNA uh, in stage two colorectal cancer. And so here is the publication where you can see that postoperatively, if there is no ctDNA detected, that those patients did unbelievably well, but postoperatively, if ctDNA was detected, you essentially had a 100% chance of having the cancer come back. And you can actually compare this to our normal clinical risk features that we look at with stage two colon cancer, and you can see how much more powerful uh, ctDNA is in the setting. And so this essentially gives you 100% positive predictive value uh, with a negative predictive value of 91%. So in this study, again, small numbers, uh, you know, kind of an earlier version of ctDNA analysis, but still incredibly powerful. What about ctDNA in the mi minimal residual disease setting for stage three colon cancer? Uh, this is the overall problem with stage three colon cancer. We know this, right, as treating physicians, that for every 10 patients that we treat, with stage three colon cancer, where we give everybody chemotherapy, we know that four or five are cured with surgery alone. We know that two or three are going to have recurrence despite getting chemotherapy. So essentially, we're treating seven to eight patients needlessly uh, to really save two or three patients out of every 10 that we treat. And so this certainly brings up an opportunity where maybe we can de-escalate treatment in certain patients and maybe escalate treatment in certain patients, but we don't know how to do that. And that's why the clinical trials are going to be so important. We also know that serial testing of ctDNA uh, in the curative setting or post-surgical setting uh, is really, really uh, prognostic. And what we see here is that with serial testing, if you're ctDNA negative and remain ctDNA negative, those patients are gonna do unbelievably good. And that's the curve that you see on the top. If you're ctDNA positive uh, or even ctDNA negative and then turn ctDNA positive, we know that the relapse risk is incredibly high in, in this one study. Again, small numbers, but every single patient that was ctDNA positive with serial testing ended up having relapse uh, of their cancer. So uh, third take-home point, detection of ctDNA postoperatively is a poor prognostic sign. Specificity is high, but sensitivity in some studies has been uh, lower, and serial monitoring will certainly increase sensitivity. Just in terms of some future directions, we, we really want to be able to impact right, uh, the patients that have um, positive ctDNA because we know that their risk of recurrence is so incredibly high. So how do we improve the outcomes for these patients? We just want to highlight this study being led by Dr. Van Morris at MD Anderson through NRG Oncology. And this is a stage two colon cancer study uh, called the COBRA study, where patients are with stage two colon cancer who are typically not given right, chemotherapy because they don't have any high-risk features are randomized to receive either um, ctDNA testing or active surveillance. Uh, if they're randomized to ctDNA testing, if ctDNA is present, uh, then they receive chemotherapy. If ctDNA is not present, which would be a majority of these patients, uh, they continue with active surveillance, which of course is their standard of care. 
So just to wrap up, right, is CTDNA and early stage colorectal cancer is truly ready for prime time? Uh, in terms of identifying actionable alterations, we know that that's ready for prime time. And we see a lot of examples of that, particularly in the lung cancer setting. We know that uh, predicting treatment response is, you know, something that is currently under study with CTDNA. Uh, we know that even in metastatic colorectal cancer that you can sometimes monitor therapeutic resistance, particularly to anti-EGFR therapies, but clinical trials are ongoing in this space. And I would just say for the detection of minimal residual disease, the answer is yes. Um, it can certainly uh, be the, one of the most prognostic tests you can possibly order uh, for your patients. But the, you know, the, the question is, you know, are the results actionable? And that's something that we're still trying to figure out. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you for taking uh, your time out of your day to listen and I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Vâng, bài học hôm nay đã kết thúc. Cảm ơn các bạn đã chú ý lắng nghe. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại.